It's not often I get to review a movie with 007, Captain Picard, and Count Dooku, but this 1993 movie has them all. So let's review Death Train. This movie starts out at a train station with the train leaving and Patrick Stewart tells us all about stolen plutonium used to make two nuclear bombs. He's part of the United Nation anti-crime organization. And then we meet General Constantine who's going to get his men to steal a train and put a bomb on it, which was made by Dr. Leisig with cheap equipment, which is why he gets irradiated. Then we're introduced to Mike's character, who's played by Pierce Bronson, my favorite 007, and he's racing bikes with his buddy. Then we jump to Sabrina, who's played by Alexander Paul from Baywatch, and she's at work, and she gets to report about the stolen plutonium, but she's gonna pawn it off the night shift. But first she tells Malcolm, who's played by Patrick Stewart, and she's worried that this stolen train in Germany is gonna cross a border. The train company, aware of this stolen train, decides to change the tracks on them, and the police show up, and they stop them, but then, they shoot some of the hostages, so they just let them go up on the merry little way. <laughs> Malcolm wants to review all available field agents, and he calls in a favor. He calls Mike and puts him on a plane, and he flies him to New York. And then, Munich. He puts together his team. Sabrina's on the team, too, and it's her first field assignment. Malcolm has a direct line to the hijackers, but they don't want to talk. Mike tells him that he thinks Sabrina's too green, but Malcolm says that she's well-trained, just lacks experience, and then he relieves the German captain at the train station. Does, does that make him captain? What is your name? Captain Wolf. Captain Wolf, I understand your reluctance to relinquish command, but if you confer with your superiors, you'll find that I have been authorized to lead this response. Dr. Whitlock checks on Lysak because he wants information, and General Constantine says that Lysak irradiated him too, so he sends men off to the hospital to kill Lysak so he can't talk to anybody. And Mike's not too keen on the plan of launching gas grenades into the train from a helicopter, but the pilot's pretty excited. She has backup, sir? Yes, you. Helicopter launch rockets. Yay! Sabrina fires the gas grenades directly into the train and Mike and the helicopters go to intercept and Mike jumps on board and the helicopter exchange fire with the train but they have masks so they can keep that up all day and they blow up one of the helicopters and shoot at Mike so he's forced to jump onto a ladder hanging from the other helicopter and get the hell out of there. If he was Steven Seagal he would have hid and taken them all out but I guess it only really had like two or three cars at most so not a lot of options. They find out that Alex the guy that's leading them is a mercenary. Malcolm and his team know this train is getting outside support and the Italians are rigging up something inside their tunnel. They're removing track, which is why Alex actually grabbed extra track because he predicted this and they set it up inside and fix it. And then Mike and his team get there and they're expecting the Italians to actually block it with a train and then the general took care of that already. Over. Inside the tunnel, Sabrina takes out the conductor, and Mike jumps on board the train and exchanges fire and saves the hostage, and then they get out of there. Why didn't they just take the train at this point? The Italians try to block the track with a truck, but it fails. Malcolm brings Ziggy some tea. I wonder if it's Earl Grey. Sabrina and Mike are still not getting along despite the fact that she saved him, and the general calls the news and tells him that there's a bomb on board the train. And then Dr. Whitlock has to fight some dude that's trying to kill Leipzig. <laughs> Lysig admits to building two bombs, and he fingers General Constantine, and then the train stops because Alex wants a doctor for the conductor who was shot. It's kind of his buddy. Malcolm's offers him some cold hard truth. Mr. Tierney, you stay on that train. You're a dead man. Malcolm tells Alex that the bomb could be triggered by phone, so he's not really trusting the general anymore. And one of Mike's men, Rodanko, called the general. He's the one that shot first and gave away their position in the tunnel. Rodanko's getting impatient though, and once he realizes he's getting made, he shoots the pilot while they're in their helicopter flying, and Mike has to take over flying and, until they wake up the pilot, and this all happens in a very convenient location where the news crew is filming. 
The general records a video. His plan is to give Iran a nuke so that Russia will attack and stop being weak. Alex demands a reporter and Sabrina goes along as his camera person and then Mike and the pilot go into this box and get under the train and there is a one shot in this camera where she can just fire out a bullet and she does right into Alex's head. I'm not insane and I'm not acting alone. This is a covert operation designed to re Mike and his friend take out everybody else, but then the general makes a call and triggers the bomb, and they have one minute. Whitlock calls and tells him the order of the wires to cut he's getting from Lysik, but Lysik doesn't remember at the end, so Mike has to make some educated guesses, and he guesses right. And then him and Sabrina get a call to go deal with the general because he just burnt his tracks and he's heading out on the plane. Malcolm sends his team to a location they got from Constantine's cell, but Sabrina knows that Constantine knows that his cell was compromised. So they go to another location where they see him and they exchange fire. Sabrina shoots the engine and Mike ends up shooting the pilot who was being forced to fly. So you kind of killed an innocent person here. Sabrina really needs to be quiet when she shoots. She does manage to shoot Constantine, but then gets attacked by a goon and Mike gets in there just in time to save her. So, debt repaid. Ah, drop the gun! But Constantine does manage to activate the bomb, so Mike starts clipping wires. But does he have time? Does he remember the sequence? Whoever is hearing this, I give you the rest of your life. Yeah, I knew it all along. Ah, oh, then we get a message from Lysig says that there was no second bomb. The end. Both Bronson and Paul revise their roles in the next one, Night Watch, which is part of the Detonator series, which is kind of the other name for this one, which kind of led Bronson to becoming James Bond. Based on novels is entirely shot in Slovenia, and the director David Jackson shot the sequel and a lot of TV, and is still going strong today. This wasn't bad, but this was very average and made for TV, and it was a big waste of the actor's talent. You had a great cast in here with a lot of talent, and that's all that really kept this from being watchable, as the action scenes were not very intense. In the end, I'm mildly interested in watching the sequel Night Watch just to see how much of an improvement it will be. Uh, it doesn't really like show Pierce Bronson in another light, which leads him to becoming 007. Uh, it doesn't have Patrick Stewart in it though, so it might take me some time to get around to it. Well, as always, thanks for watching and I don't know, maybe watch this, maybe don't. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Diplomats, wouldn't that imply diplomacy? Ours is a strange language, Sahib.